for you, and we're uh, co going to complete this evening's program with the ending of Aaron Copeland's famous work called Appalachian Spring. And uh, in this this part of the piece, he features a Shaker hymn, and it's called Simple Gifts. And um, he uses a theme and variations to uh, showcase this, and, and that's when you know you present this, and there's a mil there's th uh, not thousands. There's a lot of different variations that happen with this one theme. I wish there were thousands, but the piece has to end. Um, but yes, uh, you know, there's a fast, there's there's fast times that you'll hear, and then sometimes someone will play it slower. You'll hear it in canons uh, sometimes, and even at the end, you'll hear it in sort of a, a prayer-like form, and. Um, it's absolutely beautiful, and so we wonder, I, I started to wonder why he chose that. Why did he use a theme of variations? And maybe it was because he wanted to remind us of how many simple gifts we get every single day, and we happen to take them for granted, and it's so important to remember that we get these and to recognize them. So, like, whether, you, you know, you wake up in the morning, you see the sunrise or the sunset, those are special, um, or, you know, um, catching a smile from across the room or getting a surprise call from a friend. Um, even uh, just breathing, I love this one, breathing the, the Alaskan air. It's just absolutely amazing. These are so, there's so many that you guys can think of, and so I invite you to think about these during, um, while we play this, it's, it's fun. And so um, also, I just wanted to say thank you guys for coming uh, tonight, and we have two more shows tonight. At seven, we have a, a Dvorak, Masterworks program. We play the Dvorak Piano Quintet, and in its entirety, and um, super, super beautiful. And then again at nine, then we play this American set again. So if you have friends that missed this or you want to see it again, you saw it didn't see the beginning, come back. Um, and yeah, we play every single night. We uh, just check your when and where. We'll see you guys later. Thank you.
of our three Masterworks programs, this one stands out, I think, for uh, the abundance of beautiful, memorable melodies. Um, you know, we may, many of us may know Dvorak through his uh, symphonies, maybe the New World Symphony or Cello Concerto. Um, I've been such a fan of his melodies. This is a lesser known piece, but it's filled with beautiful melodies. So if you know Dvorak, this will deliver everything that you love about Dvorak. An interesting thing to know about this piece is he began this piece very early on in his career as a composer, and shortly after the first performance of it, he hated it. I don't know what happened, but he hated it so much that he attempted to destroy all the manuscripts. And it wasn't until way later, many years later, that he had a memory of this piece and decided he wanted to revisit it, and rework it, and he wound up turning it into a masterpiece. And it's a pleasure to play. So this piece comes in four movements. You can think of it like a symphony. You know, a composer writes a symphony, and it's a work for symphony orchestra that comes in four movements. This is like that, except it's a piano quintet written for a piano and a string quartet in four movements. Now, each member of the quartet is going to describe one of those movements to give you an idea of what to listen for as we play this piece. Heroic theme. That's a mas masculine. I think of it as masculine. And so I kind of play with that idea of almost like a knight in shining armor and damsel in distress scenario throughout the entire work. Because it's, it's pretty much a story that is created. There's the beginning and then the development of this, this love or whatever it might be, and then the ending. So I like to think of that when I play this piece. And also something else to think about is every if you, if you choose to uh, listen to one specific voice, you're going to hear so many different melodies, and um, they all the Dvorak was so good at creating melodies, but they're intertwined so much. So if you just choose one, like the violin, for instance, at a certain point, you'll hear the melody, but then you'll hear one that's under it and in a different in a different instrument, and it's just so much fun. We love it. So that's the first movement. The second movement is entitled Dumka, which is actually a term that Dvorak came up with himself. And you can find it to mean a melancholy musical vein. And so he starts the movement with this incredibly melancholy and somber theme. And it unravels into this absolutely exquisite movement. Um, and several sections are repeated. And there's a couple of contrasting sections between these repeats. And the first is a very playful theme between the violins, and, and then followed by a section by the piano that's quite introverted and mysterious and elegant. Um, but in between all of these sections, the somber, original, melancholy theme returns. And in the middle of it, there's a fiery section where all these emotions come together. But by the end, it resumes to this very melancholy um, experience. And a fun fact about Dvorak is that he himself was a violist. And so I might be a little biased, but that makes him one of my favorite composers. <laughs> the third movement, following the grand tradition of how um, most uh, quintets and quartets have been written, is a dance. And it's, it begins with the waltz, and he included uh, some uh, elements from his Czech heritage in that waltz. And then we have this middle section that is just really charming. It's, it's almost like a fairy tale, I like to think of it. And it takes that waltz theme and just transforms it, almost like Cinderella was transformed. That's kind of how I think of it, before we go back to the waltz and finish off the the last movement is a true finale in the sense that it brings all these previous characters back together. And it's really quite quite a wild movement. Um, lots and lots of activity and polyphony in the quartet um, and in the whole ensemble. And um, it even includes some of the most uh, advanced compositional techniques out there, such as a fugue which is the layering of a single melody, um, building a whole matrix out of one melody. Um, but by the end of the movement, it, everything dissolves to the simplest of forms, a chorale. Um, 
and it really it really brings the tone to almost an almost religious place uh, and spiritual uh, moment uh, of introspection and uh, this is a chance for us to reevaluate and then Dvorak winds everything back up and we finish with a flourish and so this is our Dvorak piano quintet. 